Now, I like my BMW 635 CSI, but it also seems so does Rust. Built in 1989 and then stored in a barn for over 20 years, this car's had a rough life to say the least. But I've set it as my job to restore this thing which I've never attempted before, whilst also throwing in the odd upgrade here and there. Now despite the rust and the fact the car hasn't been on the road for such a long time, we still managed to get this thing running. Oh, there she goes. But that's not without a new ECU and a core plug, which helps it run to temperature. But unfortunately, with this project, that's the least of our worries. There's a lot of work we need to do to get this thing in top shape. The engine has to come out. The rust needs to be fixed. The automatic gearbox needs to be thrown in the bin. The brakes need to stop the car. And that is just the very start of it. So how about we say we start by getting that automatic gearbox out. So here we go, my first ever attempt at taking a gearbox off a car. Although I've not done this before, I've watched plenty of YouTube videos. And the first thing that's going to be in our way is the exhaust. And as this thing is covered in rust, I can't even begin to imagine how many bolts are about to snap. So freshly lubricated with WD-40, I went at the front pipe bolts, which snapped. I then went to move the exhaust from the exhaust hangers, which also broke. And because the front pipe bolts were snapped, I just had to get the angle grinder on it. But a brand new exhaust system is going to be needed anyway when we put this car back on the road. That's if it ever does get back on the road. Last thing to undo was the rear exhaust hanger. And then I can lower down this extremely heavy exhaust to the floor. I had to improvise a bit on the front pipes and it wasn't the prettiest, but it's off. Next thing that's going to be in the way is the prop shaft and the heat shield is covering this. And as I expected, all the rubber on this car has completely perished. Now there were some bolts at the back of the prop shaft connected it to the diff, which I undid first. Then I moved over to the gearbox side. Before I did anything, I drained all the fluid out of the gearbox. Then I removed the oil feed and the oil return pipe leading to it as well. Next thing that's in the way is the anti-roll bar. Again, all crusty and rusted up. So a pair of mole grits were needed to clamp the other side of the drop link. And down comes the anti-roll bar. Then there's a sort of brace which needed to be removed underneath the gearbox. And then after that, a shifter cable. This connects to the gearbox from the shifter so you can move it from park, neutral and drive. This also snapped when I removed it. Then I'm onto the bell housing bolts. These are the actual bolts which connect the gearbox to the engine. I'm just gonna undo the ones that I can see for now, but there are plenty of us just above it which are gonna be very difficult to get to. Then the gearbox bracket can come off whilst it's being supported by a gearbox stand. And with that out of the way, I can then access the prop shaft bolts which connect it to the gearbox. And the last thing holding the prop shaft in place is two more bolts connecting it to the car. And then the prop shaft is removed. After that, I can just lower down the gearbox. The engine will tilt with it. Then I had to make this super extension contraption to get to the top bolts which connect the gearbox to the engine. There was also an electrical connector which I assume is for the reverse light as well. Then me and Hannah slowly worked away at trying to pry the gearbox away from the engine, but it just seems there was something else which were connecting it. Turns out there's two 10mm bolts which are right at the top of the gearbox. So out came the ladders so I could undo those 10mm bolts. With them out the way, we can start moving the gearbox away from the engine. <laughs> But that wasn't without having a joint shower with gearbox fluid. Not quite the shower we had in mind. But then finally, the gearbox came free. Okay, we did it. The gearbox is finally out. And this is what's left, the torque converter. Now, I thought there was normally a drain plug on torque converters so you can drain the fluid that's actually inside there. But it turns out on this one, I can't seem to see it and we got absolutely drenched with transmission fluid but the good news that dirty horrible automatic gearbox is finally out and that won't be going back in this is what will be going back in
Now this probably just looks like a pile of rust to some people and if I'm honest, it looks like a pile of rust to me. What we have here is a five speed manual gearbox with prop shaft, light and flywheel, the clutch yes obviously will be changed and also a pedal box. All of this has came out of a BMW E12 5 series and it should be a straight bolt on onto that six series engine. When I say straight bolt on, that's a little under exaggeration. The gear shifter will need to be changed and of course the prop shaft as well. And underneath the six series already, you can see it already has brackets for the manual shifters because well, this car did come in manuals in some specs. But if I'm honest, we're far from putting anything back on the car just yet because we need to strip it down to sort out all that rust. So the next thing to come out is the engine. Now the engine is the heart and soul of the car. Just like a website is the heart and soul of your business. Now they didn't have websites back in the 80s, but if they did, I'm sure this chap would have used Squarespace to build his. That's because they do everything from websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace truly is the all-in-one platform to build and run your business. Just take a look here how easy it is to build a website. Anyone can do it. When you go onto Squarespace and create your account, there's loads of templates to choose from. So you can find one that suits your style. Once you've got your template, you can go in and edit it, edit any text, drag and drop your logos, drag and drop your photos in there, and then you can add your products. Whether you're gonna be selling physical products, a digital download, selling a service, or even a gift card. You can do it all using Squarespace. So if you need a website like me, or when you do, you can click the link in the description box below, or head to squarespace.com, and when you're ready to launch, use code Matt Armstrong, and that's gonna give you 10% of your first website or domain name. Back to the E24. So to take this engine out, we've got to remove anything that's connecting the engine to the chassis of the car or anything that's going to stay in the car. So first thing is the engine's wiring loom. This is obviously connected to the ECU inside the car. So I'm going to be removing all the wiring off the engine so I can push it out the way when I lift the engine out. After that, you've got things like the aircon pipes, the radiator pipes, the power steering pipes, and that really should be about it that is attached to the engine. Okay. Small issue, it's not as straightforward as I thought. So as I probably mentioned, this wiring loom has got to stay in the car whilst we pull the engine out because this, well, it goes off everywhere. You can see it comes down here, along there, and goes into the ECU in the car, but then it also bridges off to all the little components that are in the engine. So it's just easier to actually take this off from the engine and pull that out rather than disconnect it from the ECU and unplugging everything else with it. But one of the places it branches off, you can see just down there, the wire goes straight through the inlet manifold and then on the other side of it are these. So this part here is like all the OBD1 connections and they've got to pull through and go through that little hole there which just obviously is not going to happen. So the only way of me getting this loom out of the way is to take off this inlet manifold and then I should be able to lift it out once I've disconnected those power steering lines. Not the easiest of jobs but when do we think anything was going to be easy on this car? So it's on to removing that inlet manifold and the first thing blocking that are the injectors with the fuel rail. Again, all of this is gonna to need to be replaced whether we choose to rebuild the engine or change it. And the injectors look pretty cruddy. I'd be surprised if they've ever been changed. Once we've got the fuel rail and the injectors out of the way, I can then start hacking away at the bolts which hold the inlet manifold to the side of the engine. There's about two bolts for every cylinder. So 12 bolts in total. And once I've got them all out, I can remove the inlet away from the car which gives us much better access to that wiring loom and now we can move it nicely out the way and clear for when we pull that engine out of the car but there was a few more places where it was connected like to the starter motor and a few connections around the gearbox you see there a little bit of red tape i put on a connection because there was two connections which looked really similar with the same pins so i just wanted to make it easy to identify which plug goes where when i'm putting this thing back together and i'm getting the same kind of feeling that i got when i took apart that aston martin dashboard and that feeling is Will I ever be able to put this thing back together? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to take it apart first. 
Now I've lifted the radiator out of the way, that should give us a bit more clearance to lift the engine out of the car. And the next thing that's attached to the engine that we need to take off are the power steering lines. Well, they're not actually attached to the engine, they're attached to the power steering pump, but the power steering pump is attached to the engine, so hopefully that makes sense. There's two lines to the power steering pump, a feed and a return. I disconnected both of them. And then another thing I noticed is that the torque converter might be a little too big to manoeuvre out of the car. So I removed that as well. And the engine looks just about ready to be removed. The last thing connecting it to the subframe are these two engine mounts. One on the right hand side and one on the left hand side. So the plan is to get a strap around both of these engine mounts to hold the engine. And then I can undo these engine mounts from the subframe and lift it up with the engine crane. That I've never used before. Trust me, I'm going in with confidence. Okay, so I've taken off the aircon condenser, the power steering pump, and now we should have just about enough clearance to get this thing out without damaging this fan here, which I can't remove because I don't have the little clutch thing to do. So, let's see if we can get this out. We're looking much better ish this does feel like the sketchiest thing in the world though but it's coming it's coming out looking good looking sketchy I think we've done it oh 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 my god we did it, the engine and gearbox is out of the E24, come on. Now when the six cylinder 3.5 litre engine is removed like this, it really actually doesn't look like much. The inlet manifold has obviously been removed so we could get the wiring loom out. Then we've got this huge big clunky starter motor which again we know works and I think will be reused on the manual gearbox. We will have to change this flywheel so we can have the new flywheel which is on the manual box and really there's not much to it. There is obviously a few things I had to remove from the front of the engine to get clearance. I removed the power steering pump which was mounted around here and also the aircon compressor which was mounted to this side as well and that just gave me a bit more leeway so I could tilt the engine and get it out from the car but again on this side there's really not too much the exhaust manifold is really rusty and that's where we had to cut the uh, front pipe on the exhaust to get it out but that is it an E24 3.5 litre straight six engine out of the E24. The 635 is actually off the ramp now and you can see how much higher the suspension is sitting without the weight of that engine on. In fact, I bet the play in the suspension is like an American lowrider. <laughs> but now with the engine out, we've got so much more access to inspect parts, change parts, clean them up, and we can also check out the rust on this chassis leg. Remember, this chassis leg runs all the way underneath the car, and that's what had that huge hole in. And in fact, this is looking pretty bad here. So this is probably gonna have to be a full replacement of the leg, or even some kind of repair on that. And not only that, with the engine out, I can decide what I'm gonna do with this thing. My original plan with this car was maybe to do an engine swap, but I don't know if I have the sort of knowledge or the ability to be able to do that to a modern day engine, which is what I'd want to change it for. But I wouldn't say no to stripping this engine down, trying to rebuild it, and perhaps adding a turbo, I don't know. You guys should probably let me know my best route here, because I'm still 50-50. But regardless what we do to the engine, we need a good body and chassis to put it in. And to do that, we need to strip all of the components off the car, like the front subframe and the rear subframe. But this would mean that I'd have to leave the car in the ramp, which would then compromise all of the other builds on the channel, like the Porsche that you can see behind me. So we push the E24 out of the unit, attach the tow bar to the Range Rover, thanks to Tow Bar Express for fitting that, and then towed the 6 Series to a brand new location. And 
And as a lot of you guys may know, this whole journey started off around three years ago, rebuilding cars on my driveway, which then slowly progressed into me having a unit and then one car, another car appeared till we had a full fleet. And now we are truly hitting the next stage of this journey. I have myself another unit space. This may not seem much to some people, but for me, this is another huge step in this car rebuilding YouTube journey, which never would have been possible without all of you guys watching and subscribing to the videos. Now, this doesn't mean that we're losing the other unit. This is another additional unit for big projects like the E24. Already we have the flooring sorted out, the unit sorted out, and we have a ramp ready to go up here. The next thing will be the lighting, so we can equally get as good lighting as we do in the other unit to this unit. But as I mentioned, this is gonna be the big project unit. So this now means I can get the E24 in the ramp here once it's all been installed, take the subframes off, get the whole underneath of the car powder coated, welded, and I can leave it in the ramp without compromising with the other builds. And the best part about it, this unit is next door to my other unit. So now you guys all know the next steps with the E24 project. I can now crack on with this without worrying about the time that is spent on the ramp. I still cannot believe how quick we've moved from a driveway to a unit and now another unit. I am truly am living the dream right now. I was so worried when I took on that first unit whether I was even going to be able to afford it, whether the space was just too big for me, whether the channel was even growing. I just, honestly, I just didn't even know and now look we've just expanded it one step further i was so glad i took that original risk at the start and on that note we've got so much more to crack on with so thanks so much for watching this video if you enjoyed it hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up button and i'll see you in the next video peace out